Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Katrina Jones. I am one of the senior academic advisors here at UIUC in the computer science department, and I will be hosting this uh, prospective student meeting today. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping. I will say that um, I will be, if you have any questions, if you care to put them in the chat, that would be great. Um, if there are questions that you might have that um, you might want to um, keep more personal or private, you can just in the chat room, you can, um, or in the chat box, you can just select my name and then it will privately come to me and then I will answer you through the chat box. But if you just put it in the general chat box, I will verbally answer your question as we go along. Um, I will have uh, a part here where um, we can um, stop and ask questions um, and then um, we'll continue on. So as you go through, we will um, um, make sure that your questions are answered as we go along. If you care to wait till the end of this uh, slideshow to ask your question, that is fine as well. So um, again, welcome to the uh, Department of Computer Science. I appreciate your interest in our major. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, so um, let's see. Well, we'll start off by introducing our um, advising team in the academic office. Um, to the, um, at the top row, we'll start off with Elsa Gunter. She is our Director of Undergraduate Programs. Um, Steve Herzog is our Assistant Director of Undergraduate Programs. Uh, we have, um, and he's also an academic advisor. Uh, then there's Heather Zeich. She is our Coordinator of Programs, and she's also an academic advisor. There's myself there. I am a senior advisor. Uh, Elizabeth next to me there is also a senior advisor. Next to her is Heather. Um, we call her the other Heather, but um, Heather Mahaley, she is our office manager. And then there's um, Andrew Torrey, who is our office uh, support specialist. Um, once we do, um, at this point, we are all remote, but once we do uh, resume our time back into the office, Andy is going to be the first person that you see when you walk into the office suite and will more than likely uh, assist you with any general questions and make sure that you are um, assisted and helped or be able to get information back to us. So the question is, why should you choose CS at Illinois? Well, you have options. There are several different options. We, I, I'm, I'm sure you all already know about the computer science and engineering program. That's the main computer science program. However, we have several other programs that we call our PLUS programs that are actually housed in several different colleges. Uh, so as you can see, uh, the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences um, holds most of our PLUS programs. Um, just a little bit of a um, History lesson, the math and CS program was actually the original computer science program here on campus uh, back in the 60s. This is uh, one of our bigger PLUS programs, and it um, is also one of our most competitive along with stats and CS. Um, and, then the CS and then there's other CS programs, so anthropology, astronomy, chemistry, economics, geographical, um, geographical, geographical system um, information systems and then linguistics and philosophy then in the college of agricultural uh, consumer and environmental sciences what we call actually call aces is the acronym for that is computer science in animal science and computer science in crop science we also have partnered with the college of fine arts and music i mean excuse me the college of Co fine and applied arts in with the CS and music program and the College of Media with CS and advertising. We are actually in the process of partnering with uh, College of Education to create a uh, CS plus education program that will give uh, individuals interested in this program teacher certification to be able to teach, uh, I believe, um, K through 12 system as we um, have emerged throughout time and seeing how intricate CS um, touches so many different areas, um, there has been a charge for the K through 12 system to implement 
computer science as part of their curriculum. So there's going to be some um, revamping of uh, curriculum requirements throughout different states. I believe the state of Illinois is going to jump on board with that as well, um, which is why we have begun to partner with the education department so that once that gets started, we have teachers that are ready to take on that endeavor and be ready for the field. And then we do also offer a minor in CS. So as you can see, we have several different options on how to get involved in computer science on campus. We also have a very strong CS student community. We have a lot of what we call RSOs, um, registered student organizations, that will um, satisfy the interests of um, most CS students. Here's a, I'm not going to read to you each one of them, but these are some of the featured um, a bigger, I should say, bigger groups that are in um, currently active. Um, even through COVID, with not having everyone on campus, they are still staying very active. Um, and then we also host a lot of um, virtual events. One of our biggest events is Hack, um, Hack Illinois. Um, and so we are able to connect with uh, different companies as well as our alumni in making sure that we are able to provide those avenues to make those connections. And then we do have some um, student focused events like Girls Who Code um, and uh, um, SAIL, which is also uh, another um, event that we hold every year that provides us an opportunity to reach out to other um, to different populations on campus. And all of this is all student focused and most of it is student run. Um, also being able to keep, uh, keep your ear to the ground about everything, um, just so you know what is going on from day to day or month to month or semester to semester within the college. We do have all of these different venues where you can gather information. Um, we do have the um, just the, the general website of cs.illinois.edu where you'll be able to find a plethora of information there. And then we also do have our um, um, weekly emails that go out called Inside CS. We also have our monthly um, e-news uh, with top stories. And then we also have our impact report that we actually uh, post every year, which will give you numbers and statistics on the uh, the major and how it's doing in the industry, how our students are doing in the industry, what our enrollment looks like, and so on and so forth. Um, we do have awards and fellowships that are um, exclusive to our college, um, our, and excuse me, to our department. Um, and those are the um, links to that. I did forget to mention in the beginning of this, I will be emailing this um, um, to you if you uh, choose to have this email to you. I have my email address at the end of the slideshow, so you can jot that down. And if you would like a copy of the slideshow, you can, or of this PowerPoint, just email me and I will um, email you a copy of this. So you don't have to feel like you have to hurry up and jot down all of this information. You can um, have it, have the whole thing emailed to you with the, the live links embedded. So um, there are department scholarships and there are also national international scholarship programs that you can take advantage of in order to help finance your education. So we also have um, things that you can do within the uh, campus. So we have our Illinois CS speaker series. Um, oops, sorry about that. Um, let me go back here. Here we go. Um, we have our Illinois CS speaker series, and that's when we have um, someone in uh, professional or uh, a researcher in the field come in and do um, a, a presentation of either some research they're working on or some uh, new information on maybe some innovative things that are coming down the pike. 
We also have our peer program, which is promoting undergraduate research and engineering. So it's basically um, an opportunity for our freshman, uh, first year students to get involved in research in the College of Engineering. We also have our CARE program, which is Center for Academic Resources in Engineering. So this is going to be our program that you take advantage of in order to stay on top of your coursework. There's peer mentoring, there's peer advising, there's, I'm sorry, not peer advising, but peer tutoring as well. So um, if you find yourself getting to a point where you're needing some extra help, um, this is the resource that you'll want to take care of. And we also have our research experience um, for undergraduates. These are going to be uh, summer internships or research projects that you can take advantage of on campus. We do have um, our uh, uh, research park that a lot of our students do some um, different projects at over summer on campus. And then we have our international um, programs in engineering, IPing, which is going to um, be where you find your um, um, information if you are an international student, where you'll be able to get all the connections that you need in order to stay um, compliant within the uh, um, international student rules and regulations and policies. Um, research areas, there are so many different research areas that are within CS. Um, here's a list of them here, but there are, this is not limited to this, this list. Um, there are research areas that you can get involved in simply by either getting involved in peer or you can even uh, reach out to a professor in a specific who's maybe teaching in a spe specific area to find out if they know of or are conducting any type of research that um, you might want to get involved with as well. So there's so many different ways to get in, involved in research. It's very highly recommended that you try it, try to get involved um, at some point um, throughout your tenure here because this is one of the uh, kind of, I would say it's one of those big perks that you would have attending one, a world-renowned research institution is to be able to have um, access to our, our faculty who are recognized throughout the world for their work and their research. So we also have our City Scholars Program, which is an internship program that is paid, that is open to CS and electrical, um, com electrical and computer engineering students. Um, we will take a full-time schedule of classes online and live in Chicago on our uh, sister campus at UIC. Um, you would attend, uh, attend seminars with um, experts and executives, as well as some civic leaders. You would work part-time in Chicago um, and again, it's a paid internship. And then you would be most likely eligible for this. Um, this is something that you would be able to do later on in your degree program. So probably you're uh, about going into your third year in um, or about your third year, you would probably start looking into doing this. Um, this is, it happens um, each semester. It is a competitive program that you would need to apply for and be accepted in. So it's a great opportunity for you to learn and work all in the same semester. So um, this information is um, based on information that we gathered from students who graduated um, from the 2017-2018 year. So this is about, uh, we're going into the class of 21, so this is about three years. Um, back. I do believe that um, the starting average, the average starting salary is probably into six figures now. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I have talked to some of my students who are getting ready to graduate and they have six figure offers. So um, I will say that at this time, this is based on that um, year from reporting from students, um, their average salary was at 99741 97 percent of our students were either employed or enrolled in an advanced degree and those other that other three percent um, began startups so they are um, working in the industry in some way shape or form but getting a job after graduating from uh, this program or any of our programs is not very difficult once you have um, been able to demonstrate that you have the acumen to be able to do the work that they are looking for you to do. 
Um, we do stay engaged with our industry partners. Over to the right here is a list of uh, a short list of some of our um, industry partners that we work with very closely uh, and very often. They will come in and they will do what we call tech talks or technical talks. They'll come in and talk about what's going on in the industry. Um, we also have our career fairs um, and networking events. The nice thing about our career fairs, career fairs is that a lot of these companies will send our alum back to do some of these um, career fairs so that you can talk to someone who has been literally been in your shoes as a student at the university and now are in the industry and can help you understand how that bridge works. And then they can also get a good gauge of how well you'll be able to fit into those positions. Um, again, we talked about the Hack Illinois, but there are other hack competitions, or, um, hack events that happen as well as some other competitions. We do have um, an ACM um, chapter group, uh, student run chapter group, which is the largest student run chapter group in the country. Uh, they host a lot of these hackathons and some in a lot of these competitions. And then of course we have our research collaborations that are sponsored by research and technology um, transfer. So um, you can get with our corporate partners and be able to do some research, collaborate with them uh, between us as a university and them as their uh, um, industry and be able to make some connections in that way as well. Um, after hours is one of our um, career fairs uh, for internships, I should say, not career fairs, but it's for internships. It's basically a time where sometime in the evening, it usually starts around 5 p.m. It's in the fall and the spring, right around mid-semester. And they um, have their industry partners come and they send their representatives to um, literally do your, you know, your elevator speech. Um, that picture right there in the center is actually um, a, uh, a picture from one of our um, after hour events. So as you can see, it's very casual, but, you know, everybody's standing there waiting to kind of pitch their, 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 um, to make their pitch for why they would be a good candidate for an internship. And then uh, usually uh, once you begin that process, then you will go through an interview process if you are selected and then um, uh, selected to go through that process. And if you're selected, then that would be something that you would uh, be able to build upon. Um, a lot of our students take in those internships and those internships then turn into offers if they are, you know, if they find themselves a really good fit or that company finds that they are um, a great asset, they will um, offer them positions once they graduate. So, you know, it's not, it's not uncommon for our students to have job offers before they graduate. And probably about a, at least a year before they graduate. Um, we do have some of our, our alumni have uh, founded or are leaders of some of the bigger companies um, in the industry. So um, if, as you can see, again, I'm not going to read everything, but <clears throat> some of our um, alum have, a found, have found some of these uh, programs like Affirm, um, Match.com, PayPal, Netscape, which is actually one of the, was the first web browser for the internet. Um, and then we now have leaders in um, these uh, country, countries, companies below uh, with Microsoft. Um, as a matter of fact, that student that I was referring to earlier, um, she is going to move to Seattle and work for Microsoft on a six-figure salary, um, graduating after three years because she came in with a lot of AP credit and she was able to graduate a little bit early. And um, this is not always great, but it's definitely um, very meritorious to be able to do that. So. Um, again, it's a lot of exciting opportunities uh, that are waiting um, for our graduates of our program. So I'm going to pause here real quick. Um, I see some questions that have popped up in the chat. So I will go ahead and address those. Um, so you asked about the research programs. I think I did go over that in a previous slide. Um, 
there, I can't really tell you about any individual one. I do, like, again, I can tell you about Pure, that's for freshmen. There's um, opportunities at Research Park to be able to do research. And then there's opportunities that you can find individually with professors as well. Um, and then with also with our um, industry partners. Um, does that kind of help answer your question? Or was there something more specific you were looking for? Is it Babu? Okay, perfect. Um, I'm going to read this one. Okay, so yes, when you are um, filling out the application, you will need to declare CS. If you are looking at CS engineering, you will need to declare CS engineering, and it must be your first choice. Um, CS engineering cannot be the second choice. It's just not something that um, is allowed. I don't even think the, the application will allow you to do it. Um, if you are looking at one of the CS plus programs, um, you can also um, um, you will also declare that on your major as well. There are other ways to be able to do it. Sometimes um, if you're not sure you want to do CS, um, there's an opportunity that you can go um, undecided and declare with mate later. But that's not, a, that's not a recommended path just because um, it's, it's not guaranteed that you will transfer into the program from, under, from undecided. Um, so um, and it's more competitive when you're, once you're in, there's not as many slots left as there are when you are applying straight in as a freshman. So you'll, you'll want to, if you're looking at CS engineering, you'll definitely want to declare that on your, um, as your first choice major. Does that help answer your question? Okay, perfect. All right, I don't see any other questions that are popping up. Um, I'm gonna give it like 30 seconds just in case somebody's typing, see if there's any other questions and then I'll move on. I will go on then. Um, again, if you think of something, please just put it in the chat and I will address them um, as we go along. Okay. So um, this is, oops, sorry. This is something um, that we have that you can, again, if you have a uh, copy of the slideshow, you can um, uh, copy this link and you know download one of your, uh, one of these backgrounds to your Zoom and be able to use it as a background. So we'll kind of get an idea of what it's like. Um, I know it's this is not like uh, actually, you know, feet on the ground, you know, physically in the building, taking a look at everything. Um, hopefully we can uh, get back to that over summer or um, closer to fall um, if you are applying to the university this fall. Excuse me, um, you can hopefully maybe come back for a, a tour. Um, I'm hoping that we can get back to that. But in the meantime, um, feel free to take advantage of downloading one of these slides here. I mean, sorry, one of these pictures here. Um, just for identification purposes, this is the Siebel, Siebel building. This is actually the back of the building. Um, but this is where you um, is in the middle of the engineering quad, uh, actually on the edge of the engineering quad. Um, and this is where uh, our academic office, <clears throat> excuse me, is located. Uh, your professors' uh, offices are also in this building, as well as an Einstein's Bagel coffee shop, yay. Um, as, and and uh, the RSOs um, that are computer science based also have office space in this building. So you can take advantage of um, their, they do offer like some peer, uh, peer um, kind of mentoring and um, 
even office hours, what they call office hours. So if you had questions about certain things that are on campus or in the department, or if you even need some help with classes or something, they do have um, people that are there that will be able to help you with that. Okay, so here's my information. Um, if you want to jot down my email address, kreneej at illinois.edu. Um, and you want to, a copy of this, please feel free to email me and I will be more than happy to email you this slideshow. Um, there's also, um, if you have any general questions, I should have put this up here, I'm sorry I didn't. If you have any general questions about um, the, um, the department itself, you can email, um, and I'll put this in the slideshow as well, um, you can email undergrad at cs.illinois.edu. Um, that will go to our general email box if you have any general questions that you think of, or if you care to um, stick with just uh, talking to me, I would be more than happy to um, um, answer your questions as well. I don't have that percentage. Um, I, that would be the admissions office. We don't. We are not involved directly in, in admissions. That is um, completely through the admissions department. Um, just from what I understand, I do know that we do have a lot of students from um, California. We do have a lot of students um, from. Um, a lot of East Coast states as well, um, but I don't know what that percentage is. I don't know if we have a certain percentage that we stick to. I don't think we do that. I think we just basically look at the, what they do is they look at each application and they evaluate each student in a holistic view, review process and decide from there. The student teacher ratio, I mean, this is a large institution, so um, a lot of our lower level classes are going to be very large. Um, the more um, the higher, the more uh, the deeper you get into the program, the smaller the classes become. Um, but you know, some of our your your intro classes they're going to be um, you know probably. Um, it's in one of our, uh, physically, in the physical space, we are in a large auditorium, Bollinger Theater. So you're going to be in there with a lot of students. Um, that part of that, part of that is because the intro classes, um, the first three classes, so your uh, intro to computer science class, your data uh, discrete structures, and data structures are classes that are open to people across campus because they are courses that are required for students to take who are interested in transferring into CS. So we have to make that um, available to other students. Um, we have to make that available to other students on campus. So those classes are going to be larger. Um, does that answer your question? Okay, great. Um, requirements for the CS program, um, those also can be found on our website, um, CS, um, CS uh, what is it? <laughs> I just lost it on top of my head. Um, CS.illinois.edu, um, and you can look under academics, but our basic um, our basic requirements uh, consist of um, uh, our core core requirements are intro uh, discrete structures um, design studio which is uh, basically um, coding in a more um, uniform fashion then there's um, data structures computer architecture, um, systems programming, algorithms, uh, numerical methods, um, 
CS and uh, statistics and uh, statistics in computer science, and then there's languages and compilers. So those are our um, core classes that is required of not only CS engineering but CS plus programs as well. Um, of course, um, couple that with the general education as well as electives. So our electives, there are various courses that um, we offer um, from AI to data um, to um, data mining, uh, machine learning, so on and so forth. So. Um, Okay. Does that answer your question about the um, the computer the program requirements? Okay. So let's see. Let me back up on the questions a little bit. And as far as what is going to be optional for class of twenty two, I don't. I can't tell you that. That would be a question for admissions. I, I'm not sure what they're requiring. I know that it was optional for class, well, we used, um, for the class of 2021, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure if that's going to still be the same situation for class of 2022. So um, I think that's probably still up in the air. The computer hardware you would need um, just a basic laptop um, that has that can hold a lot of memory. Peter, um, that's basically it. Um, whether it's PC or Mac, that's completely up to you. But um, just make sure you have enough memory on there because you will be doing a lot of programming and, and, and coding. Um, yeah, okay, so are there any programming languages taught practice in computer engineering program? Well, let, first, let me, let me clarify. There's two different programs here. There's computer science, which is the software program, and computer engineering, which is the hardware program. The computer engineering program is a different department. So if you are interested in, if you if you are referring to computer science, yes. Um, we start off with Java and we transform into C++, um, I think, uh, through the, uh, in the, in the second class, uh, your second semester, you'll tra um, transition to C++. And then numerical methods, there's some Python there. Um, so those are the languages that we use here in computer science. really answer your question about computer engineering because we that's a different department and I I'm not really familiar with their um, job placement and so on and so forth I can tell you I, I can tell you that computer science is their job placement um, situation is very um, positive it's it's like I said 97 percent of our students have a job before they leave or are in some type of um, advanced program. Um, I don't have that information about computer engineering. You would need to contact the computer engineering department for um, those um, for that for that information. My pleasure. You're welcome. Um, are there any other questions that you guys can think of right now? I can give you a, um, some time to kind of think of some things. If you don't have any other questions and you feel um, you have um, gotten everything that you need out of this, please feel free to um, excuse yourself. I, it was a pleasure um, doing this with you. I look forward, hopefully, to working with you in the future. Um, and please, again, um, if you would like a copy of the slideshow, just send me an email and I will send you a copy of it. All right, well, it looks like 
we're good to go here. Um, for those of you who stuck around, again, I thank you and um, good luck with your uh, your college search. I hope you find what you're looking for. And if CS engineering or CS programs here at U of I is what you're looking for, I wish you all the luck and um, look forward to working with you in the future. You're welcome. Goodbye.